Johann Rudolf Rocker March 25, 1873, to September 19, 1958, was an anarchist writer and activist. Though often described as an anarcho-syndicalist, he was a self-professed anarchist without adjectives, believing that anarchist schools of thought represented only different methods of economy, and that the first objective for anarchists was to secure the personal and social freedom of men. Topic. Early life Rudolf Rocker was born to the lithographer Georg Philipp Rocker and his wife Anna Margaretha Ney Naumann daughter of Heinrich Naumann as one of their four children, in Mainz, Hesse now Rhineland Palatinate, Germany, on March 25, 1873. His siblings were Philip, 1870–1873, Katharina Barbara, 20 March 1870–3 of April 1870, and Friedrich, b. 1877. This Catholic, yet not particularly devout, family had a democratic and anti-Prussian tradition dating back to Rocker's grandfather, who participated in the March Revolution of 1848. However, Georg Philip died just four years after Rocker's birth. After that, the family managed to evade poverty, only through the massive support by his mother's family. Rocker's uncle and godfather Karl Rudolf Naumann, a longtime member of the Social Democratic Party SPD, became a substitute for his dead parents and a role model, who directed the boys' intellectual development. Rocker was disgusted by his schoolteacher's authoritarian methods, calling the man a heartless despot. He was, therefore, a poor student. Rocker's father died in 1877. In October 1884, the Rocker household was joined by his mother's new husband Ludwig Baumgartner. This marriage presented Rudolf with a half-brother, Ernest Ludwig Heinrich Baumgartner, with whom Rocker did not maintain close contact. Rocker was shocked once again as his mother died in February 1887. After his stepfather remarried soon thereafter, Rocker was put into an orphanage, disgusted by the unconditional obedience demanded by the Catholic orphanage and drawn by the prospect of adventure, Rocker ran away from the orphanage twice. The first time he just wandered around in the woods around Mainz with occasional visits to the city to forage for food and was retrieved after three nights. The second time, which was at the age of 14 and a reaction to the orphanage wanting him to be apprenticed as a tinsmith, he worked as a cabin boy for Köln Düsseldorfer Dampfschifferzgesellschaft. He enjoyed leaving his hometown and traveling to places like Rotterdam. After he returned, he started an apprenticeship to become a typographer like his uncle Karl. <laughs> Early politics Political rights do not originate in parliaments, they are, rather, forced upon parliaments from without. And even their enactment into law has for a long time been no guarantee of their security. Just as the employers always try to nullify every concession they had made to labor as soon as opportunity offered, as soon as any signs of weakness were observable in the workers' organizations, so governments also are always inclined to restrict or to abrogate completely rights and freedoms that have been achieved if they imagine that the people will put up no resistance. Even in those countries where such things as freedom of the press, right of assembly, right of combination, and the like have long existed, governments are constantly trying to restrict those rights or to reinterpret them by juridical hair-splitting. Political rights do not exist because they have been legally set down on a piece of paper, but only when they have become the ingrown habit of a people, and when any attempt to impair them will meet with the violent resistance of the populace. Where this is not the case, there is no help in any parliamentary opposition or any platonic appeals to the Constitution. Karl also had a substantial library consisting of socialist literature of all colors. Rocker was particularly impressed by the writings of Constantine France, a federalist and opponent of Bismarck's centralized German Empire, Eugen Duering, an anti-Marxist socialist, whose theories had some anarchist aspects, novels like Victor Hugo's Les Miserables and Edward Bellamy's Looking Backward, as well as the traditional socialist literature such as Karl Marx's Capital and Ferdinand Lassalle and August Bebel's writings. Rocker became a socialist and regularly discussed his ideas with others. His employer became the first person he converted to socialism. Under the influence of his uncle, he joined the SPD and became active in the Topographers' Labor Union in Mainz. He volunteered in the 1890 electoral campaign, which had to be organized in semi clandestinity because of continuing government repression, helping the SPD candidate Franz Joost retake the seat for the district Mainz Oppenheim in the Reichstag. 
Because the seat was heavily contested, important SPD figures like August Bebel, Wilhelm Liebknecht, Georg von Volmar, and Paul Singer visited the town to help Joost and Rocker had a chance to see them speak. In 1890, there was a major debate in the SPD about the tactics it would choose after the lifting of the anti-socialist laws. A radical oppositional wing known as Die Jungen the Young Ones developed. While the party leaders viewed the parliament as a means of social change, Die Jungen thought it could at best be used to spread the socialist message. Unwilling to wait for the collapse of capitalist society which Marxism predicted, they wanted to start a revolution as soon as possible. Although this wing was strongest in Berlin, Magdeburg, and Dresden, it also had a few adherents in Mainz, among them Rudolf Rocker. In May 1890, he started a reading circle, named Freiheit Freedom, to study theoretical topics more intensively. After Rocker criticized Joost and refused to retract his statements, he was expelled from the party. The same would happen to the rest of Die Jungen in October 1891. Nonetheless, he remained active and even gained influence in the socialist labor movement in Mainz. Although he had already encountered anarchist ideas as a result of his contacts to Die Jungen in Berlin, his conversion to anarchism did not take place until the International Socialist Congress in Brussels in August 1891. He was heavily disappointed by the discussions at the Congress, as it, especially the German delegates, refused to explicitly denounce militarism. He was rather impressed by the Dutch socialist and later anarchist Ferdinand Domela Neuwenhuis, who attacked Liebknecht for his lack of militancy. Rocker got to know Karl Hofer, a German active in smuggling anarchist literature from Belgium to Germany. Hofer gave him Bakunin's God and the State and Kropotkin's Anarchist Morality, two of the most influential anarchist works, as well as the newspaper Autonomy. Rocker became convinced that the source of political institutions is an irrational belief in a higher authority, as Bakunin claimed in God and the State. However, Rocker rejected the Russians' rejection of theoretical propaganda and his claim that only revolutions can bring about change. Nevertheless, he was very much attracted by Bakunin's style, marked by pathos, emotion, and enthusiasm, designed to give the reader an impression of the heat of revolutionary moments. Rocker even attempted to emulate this style in his speeches, but was not very convincing. Kropotkin's anarcho-communist writings, on the other hand, were structured logically and contained an elaborate description of the future anarchist society. The work's basic premise, that an individual is entitled to receive the basic means of living from the community independently of his or her personal contributions, impressed Rocker. In 1891, all Die Jungen were either expelled from the SPD or left voluntarily. They then founded the Union of Independent Socialists VUS. Rocker became a member and founded a local section in Mainz, mostly active in distributing anarchist literature smuggled in from Belgium or the Netherlands in the city. He was a regular speaker at labor union meetings. On December 18, 1892, he spoke at a meeting of unemployed workers. Impressed by Rocker's speech, the speaker that followed Rocker, who was not from Mainz and therefore did not know at what point the police would intervene, advised the unemployed to take from the rich, rather to starve. The meeting was then dissolved by the police. The speaker was arrested, while Rocker barely escaped. He decided to flee Germany to Paris via Frankfurt. He had, however, already been toying with the idea of leaving the country, in order to learn new languages, get to know anarchist groups abroad, and, above all, to escape conscription. Paris In Paris, he first came into contact with Jewish anarchism. In spring 1893, he was invited to meeting of Jewish anarchists, which he attended and was impressed by. Though neither a Jew by birth nor by belief, he ended up frequenting the group's meeting, eventually holding lectures himself. Solomon Rappaport, later known as S. Ansky, allowed Rocker to live with him, as they were both typographers and could share Rappaport's tools. During this period, Rocker also first came into contact with the blending of anarchist and syndicalist ideas represented by the General Confederation of Labor CGT, which would influence him in the long term. In 1895, as a result of the anti-anarchist sentiment in France, Rocker travelled to London to visit the German consulate and examine the possibility of his returning to Germany but was told he would be imprisoned upon return. <laughs> London <laughs> Rocker's first years in London Rocker decided to stay in London. 
He got a job as the librarian of the Communist Workers' Educational Union, where he got to know Louise Michel and Errico Malatesta, two influential anarchists. Inspired to visit the quarter after reading about Darkest London. In the works of John Henry Mackay, he was appalled by the poverty he witnessed in the predominantly Jewish East End. He joined the Jewish anarchist Arbiter Frank group he had obtained information about from his French comrades, quickly becoming a regular lecturer at its meetings. There, he met his lifelong companion Millie Whitkop, a Ukrainian-born Jew who had fled to London in 1894. In May 1897, having lost his job and with little chance of re-employment, Rocker was persuaded by a friend to move to New York. Whitkop agreed to accompany him and they arrived on the 29th. They were, however, not admitted into the country, because they were not legally married. They refused to formalize their relationship. Rocker explained that their bond is one of free agreement between my wife and myself. It is a purely private matter that only concerns ourselves, and it needs no confirmation from the law. Whitkop added, Love is always free. When love ceases to be free it is prostitution. The matter received front-page coverage in the national press. The Commissioner General of Immigration, the former Knights of Labor President Terence V. Powderly, advised the couple to get married to settle the matter, but they refused and were deported back to England on the same ship they had arrived on. Unable to find employment upon return, Rocker decided to move to Liverpool. A former Whitechapel comrade of his persuaded him to become the editor of a recently founded Yiddish weekly newspaper called Dos Frey Vort, the free word, even though he did not speak the language at the time. The newspaper only appeared for eight issues, but it led the Arbiter Frank group to relaunch its eponymous newspaper and invite Rocker to return to the capital and take over as its editor. Although it received some funds from Jews in New York, the journal's financial survival was precarious from the start. However, many volunteers helped by selling the paper on street corners and in workshops. During this time, Rocker was especially concerned with combating the influence of Marxism and historical materialism in London's Jewish labor movement. In all, the Arbiter Freint published 25 essays by Rocker on the topic, the first ever critical examination of Marxism in Yiddish, according to William J. Fishman. Arbiter Freint's unsound financial footing also meant Rocker rarely received the small salary promised to him when he took over the journal and he depended financially on Whitkop. Despite Rocker's sacrifices, however, the paper was forced to cease publication for lack of funds. In November 1899, the prominent American anarchist Emma Goldman visited London and Rocker met her for the first time. After hearing of the Arbiter Freint's situation she held three lectures to raise funds, but that was not enough. Not wanting to be left without any means of propaganda, Rocker founded the Germinal in March 1900. Compared to Arbiter Freint, it was more theoretical, applying anarchist thought to the analysis of literature and philosophy. It represented a maturation of Rocker's thinking towards Kropotkin ITE anarchism and would survive until March 1903. 1902 saw the London Jews being targeted by a wave of anti-alien sentiment, while Rocker was away for a year in Leeds. Upon return in September, he was happy to see the Jewish anarchists had kept the Arbiter Freint organization alive. A conference of all Jewish anarchists of the city on December 26 decided for a re-launch of the Arbiter Freint newspaper as the organ of all Jewish anarchists in Great Britain and Paris and made Rocker the editor. The first issue appeared on March 20, 1903. Following the Kishinev pogrom in the Russian Empire, Rocker led a demonstration in solidarity with the victims, the largest ever gathering of Jews in London. Afterwards he travelled to Leeds, Glasgow, and Edinburgh to lecture on the topic. <laughs> <laughs> Jewish anarchism's golden years From 1904, the Jewish labour and anarchist movements in London reached their golden years. According to William J. Fishman, in 1905, publication of Germinal resumed, it reached a circulation of 2,500 a year later, while Arbiter Freint reached a demand of 5,000 copies. In 1906, the Arbiter Freint group finally realized a longtime goal, the establishment of a club for both Jewish and Gentile workers. The Workers' Friend Club was founded in a former Methodist church on Jubilee Street. Rocker, by now a very eloquent speaker, became a regular speaker. 
As a result of the popularity of both the club and Germinal beyond the anarchist scene, Rocker befriended many prominent non anarchist Jews in London, among them the Zionist philosopher B. E. R. Borachov. From June 8, 1906, Rocker was involved in a garment workers' strike. Wages and working conditions in the East End were much lower than in the rest of London, and tailoring was the most important industry. Rocker was asked by the union leading the strike to become part of the strike committee along with two other Arbiter Freint members. He was a regular speaker at the strikers' gatherings. The strike failed, because the strike funds ran out. By July 1, all workers were back in their workshops. Rocker represented the Federation at the International Anarchist Congress in Amsterdam in 1907. Errico Malatesta, Alexander Shapiro, and he became the secretaries of the new Anarchist International, but it only lasted until 1911. Also in 1907, his son Fermin was born. In 1909, while visiting France, Rocker denounced the execution of the anarchist pedagogue Francisco Ferrer in Barcelona, leading him to be deported back to England. In 1912, Rocker was once again an important figure in a strike by London's garment makers. In late April, 1,500 tailors from the West End, who were more highly skilled and better paid than those in the East End, started striking. By May, the total number was between 7,000 and 8,000. Since much of the West Enders' work was now being performed in the East End, the tailors' union there, under the influence of the Arbiter Freint group, decided to support the strike. Rudolf Rocker on the one hand saw this as a chance for the East End tailors to attack the sweatshop system, but on the other was afraid of an anti-Semitic backlash, should the Jewish workers remain idle. He called for a general strike. His call was not followed, since over 70% of the East End tailors were engaged in the ready-made trade, which was not linked with the West End workers' strike. Nonetheless, 13,000 immigrant garment workers from the East End went on strike following a May 8 assembly at which Rocker spoke. Not one worker voted against a strike. Rocker became a member of the strike committee and chairman of the finance subcommittee. He was responsible for collecting money and other necessities for the striking workers. On the side he published the Arbiter Freint newspaper on a daily basis to disseminate news about the strike. He spoke at the workers' assemblies and demonstrations. On May 24 a mass meeting was held to discuss the question of whether to settle on a compromise proposed by the employers, which did not entail a closed union shop. A speech by Rocker convinced the workers to continue the strike. By the next morning, all of the workers' demands were met. <laughs> <laughs> World War I Rocker opposed both sides in World War I on internationalist grounds. Although most in the United Kingdom and continental Europe expected a short war, Rocker predicted on August 7, 1914, a period of mass murder such as the world has never known before, and attacked the Second International for not opposing the conflict. Rocker with some other Arbiter Freint members opened up a soup kitchen without fixed prices to alleviate the further impoverishment that came with the Great War. There was a debate between Kropotkin, who supported the Allies, and Rocker in Arbiter Freint in October and November. He called the war, the contradiction of everything we had fought for. Shortly after the publication of this statement, on December 2, Rocker was arrested and interned as an enemy alien. This was also the result of the anti-German sentiment in the country. Arbiter Freint was suppressed in 1915. The Jewish anarchist movement in Britain never fully recovered from these blows. Topic. Back in Germany Topic. FVDG In March 1918, Rocker was taken to the Netherlands under an agreement to exchange prisoners through the Red Cross. He stayed at the house of the socialist leader Ferdinand Domela Neuwenhuis and he recovered from the health problems from which he suffered as a result of his internment in the UK and met up with his wife Millie Whitkop and his son Fermin. He returned to Germany in November 1918 upon an invitation from Fritz Kader to join him in Berlin to rebuild the Free Association of German Trade Unions FVDG. The FVDG was a radical labor federation that quit the SPD in 1908 and became increasingly syndicalist and anarchist. 
During World War I, it had been unable to continue its activities for fear of government repression, but remained in existence as an underground organization. Rocker was opposed to the Vigis' alliance with the Communists during and immediately after the November Revolution, as he rejected Marxism, especially the concept of the dictatorship of the proletariat. Soon after arriving in Germany, however, he once again became seriously ill. He started giving public speeches in March 1919, including one at a Congress of Munitions Workers in Erfurt, where he urged them to stop producing war material. During this period the FVDG grew rapidly and the coalition with the Communists soon began to crumble. Eventually all syndicalist members of the Communist Party were expelled. From December 27 to December 30, 1919, the 12th National Congress of the FVDG was held in Berlin. The organization decided to become the Free Workers' Union of Germany FAD under a new platform, which had been written by Rocker, the Prinzipienerklärung des Syndicalismus Declaration of Syndicalist Principles. It rejected political parties and the dictatorship of the proletariat as bourgeois concepts. The program recognized only decentralized, purely economic, organizations. Although public ownership of land, means of production, and raw materials was advocated, nationalization and the idea of a communist state were rejected. Rocker decried nationalism as the religion of the modern state and opposed violence, championing instead direct action and the education of the workers. Heyday of syndicalism On Gustav Landauer's death during the Munich Soviet Republic uprising, Rocker took over the work of editing the German publications of Kropotkin's writings. In 1920, the Social Democratic Defense Minister Gustav Nosk started the suppression of the revolutionary left, which led to the imprisonment of Rocker and Fritz Kater. During their mutual detainment, Rocker convinced Kater, who had still held some social democratic ideals, completely of anarchism. In the following years, Rocker became one of the most regular writers in the FOD organ Der Syndicalist. In 1920, the FOD hosted an international syndicalist conference, which ultimately led to the founding of the International Workers' Association in December 1922. Augustin Sauchi, Alexander Shapiro, and Rocker became the organization's secretaries and Rocker wrote its platform. In 1921, he wrote the pamphlet Der Bankrott des Russischen Staatskommunismus the bankruptcy of Russian state communism attacking the Soviet Union. He denounced what he considered a massive oppression of individual freedoms and the suppression of anarchists starting with the purge on April 12, 1918. He supported instead the workers who took part in the Kronstadt uprising and the peasant movement led by the anarchist Nestor Makhno, whom he would meet in Berlin in 1923. In 1924, Rocker published a biography of Johann Most called Das Leben eines Rebellen The Life of a Rebel. There are great similarities between the men's vitas. It was Rocker who convinced the anarchist historian Max Netlau to start publication of his anthology Geschichte der Anarchie History of Anarchy in 1925. Topic. Decline of syndicalism During the mid-1920s, the decline of Germany's syndicalist movement started. The FAD had reached its peak of around 150,000 members in 1921, but then started losing members to both the Communist and the Social Democratic Party. Rocker attributed this loss of membership to the mentality of German workers accustomed to military discipline, accusing the communists of using similar tactics to the Nazis and thus attracting such workers. At first only planning a short book on nationalism, he started work on nationalism and culture, which would be published in 1937 and become one of Rocker's best-known works, around 1925. 1925 also saw Rocker visit North America on a lecture tour with a total of 162 appearances. He was encouraged by the anarcho-syndicalist movement he found in the U.S. and Canada. Returning to Germany in May 1926, he became increasingly worried about the rise of nationalism and fascism. He wrote to Netlau in 1927, Every nationalism begins with a Mazzini, but in its shadow there lurks a Mussolini. In 1929, Rocker was a co-founder of the Guild Freiheitlicher Bucherfreunde Guild of Libertarian Bibliophiles, a publishing house which would release works by Alexander Berkman, William Godwin, Eric Mussum, and John Henry Mackay. In the same year he went on a lecture tour in Scandinavia and was impressed by the anarcho-syndicalists there. Upon return, he wondered whether Germans were even capable of anarchist thought. 
In the 1930 elections, the Nazi Party received 18.3% of all votes, a total of 6 million. Rocker was worried, "...once the Nazis get to power, we'll all go the way of Landauer and Eisner," who were killed by reactionaries in the course of the Munich Soviet Republic uprising. In 1931, Rocker attended the IWA Congress in Madrid and then the unveiling of the Neuenhuis Memorial in Amsterdam. In 1933, the Nazis came to power. After the Reichstag fire on February 27, Rocker and Wittkop decided to leave Germany. As they left they received news of Erich Musam's arrest. After his death in July 1934, Rocker would write a pamphlet called Der Leidens Weg Erich Musams The Life and Suffering of Erich Musam about the anarchists' fate. Rocker reached Basel, Switzerland on March 8 by the last train to cross the border without being searched. Two weeks later, Rocker and his wife joined Emma Goldman in Saint-Tropez, France. There he wrote Der Weg ins Dritte Reich the path to the Third Reich about the events in Germany, but it would only be published in Spanish. In May, Rocker and Wittkop moved back to London. There Rocker was welcomed by many of the Jewish anarchists he had lived and fought alongside for many years. He held lectures all over the city. In July, he attended an extraordinary IWA meeting in Paris, which decided to smuggle its organ Die Internationale into Nazi Germany. <laughs> United States <laughs> <laughs> First years On August 26, 1933, Rocker with his wife emigrated to New York. There they were reunited with Fermin who had stayed there after accompanying his father on his 1929 lecture tour in the U.S. The Rocker family moved to live with a sister of Whitcops in Tawanda, Pennsylvania where many families with progressive or libertarian socialist views lived. In October, Rocker toured the U.S. and Canada speaking about racism, fascism, dictatorship, socialism in English, Yiddish, and German. He found many of his Jewish comrades from London, who had since emigrated to America, and became a regular writer for Frey Arbeiter Stimme, a Jewish anarchist newspaper. Back in Tawanda, in the summer of 1934, Rocker started work on an autobiography, but news of Eric Musam's death led him to halt his work. He was working on nationalism and culture, when the Spanish Civil War broke out in July 1936 instilling great optimism in Rocker. He published a pamphlet The Truth About Spain and contributed to the Spanish Revolution, a special fortnightly newspaper published by American anarchists to report on the events in Spain. In 1937, he wrote The Tragedy of Spain, which analyzed the events in greater detail. In September 1937, Rocker and Whitcop moved to the libertarian commune Mohegan Colony about 50 miles 80 kilometers from New York City. Nationalism and culture and anarcho-syndicalism In 1937, Nationalism and Culture, which he had started work on around 1925, was finally published with the help of anarchists from Chicago Rocker had met in 1933. A Spanish edition was released in three volumes in Barcelona, the stronghold of the Spanish anarchists. It would be his best-known work. In the book, Rocker traces the origins of the state back to religion claiming that all politics is in the last instance religion. Both enslave their very creator, man, both claim to be the source of cultural progress. He aims to prove the claim that culture and power are essentially antagonistic concepts. He applies this model to human history, analyzing the Middle Ages, the Renaissance, Enlightenment, and modern capitalist society, and to the history of the socialist movement. He concludes by advocating a new humanitarian socialism. In 1938, Rocker published a history of anarchist thought, which he traced all the way back to ancient times, under the name Anarcho-Syndicalism. A modified version of the essay would be published in the Philosophical Library series European Ideologies under the name Anarchism and Anarcho-Syndicalism in 1949. World War II, Pioneers of American Freedom, Final Years In 1939, Rocker had to undergo a serious operation and was forced to give up lecture tours. However, in the same year, the Rocker Publications Committee was formed by anarchists in Los Angeles to translate and publish Rocker's writings. 
Many of his friends died around this time, Alexander Berkman in 1936, Emma Goldman in 1940, Max Netlau in 1944, many more were imprisoned in Nazi concentration camps. Although Rocker had opposed his teacher Kropotkin for his support of the Allies during World War I, Rocker argued that the Allied effort in World War II was just, as it would ultimately lead to preservation of libertarian values. Although he viewed every state as a coercive apparatus designed to secure the economic exploitation of the masses, he defended democratic freedoms, which he considered a result of a desire for freedom of the enlightened public. This position was criticized by many American anarchists, who did not support any war. After World War II, an appeal in the Freie Arbeiter Stimme detailing the plight of German anarchists and called for Americans to support them. By February 1946, the sending of aid parcels to anarchists in Germany was a large scale operation. In 1947, Rocker published Zur Betrachtung der Lage in Deutschland regarding the portrayal of the situation in Germany about the impossibility of another anarchist movement in Germany. It became the first post-World War II anarchist writing to be distributed in Germany. Rocker thought young Germans were all either totally cynical or inclined to fascism and awaited a new generation to grow up before anarchism could bloom once again in the country. Nevertheless, the Federation of Libertarian Socialists FFS was founded in 1947 by former FOD members. Rocker wrote for its organ, Die Freie Gesellschaft, which survived until 1953. In 1949, Rocker published another well-known work. In Pioneers of American Freedom, a series of essays, he details the history of liberal and anarchist thought in the United States, seeking to debunk the idea that radical thought was foreign to American history and culture and had merely been imported by immigrants. On his 80th birthday in 1953, a dinner was held in London to honor Rocker. Messages of gratitude were read by the likes of Thomas Mann, Albert Einstein, Herbert Reed, and Bertrand Russell. On September 10, 1958, Rocker died in the Mohegan Colony. Topic works Nationalism and Culture Anarcho Syndicalism, Theory and Practice Pioneers of American Freedom, The Tragedy of Spain, Anarchism and Anarcho Syndicalism, The London Years Topic References Topic Bibliography Average, Paul. 2006. Anarchist Voices. Sterling, A.K. Press. ISBN 978-1-904859-27-7. Barsky, Robert F. Bakhtin as Anarchist? Language, Law, and Creative Impulses in the Work of Mikhail Bakhtin and Rudolf Rocker. The South Atlantic Quarterly. 97, 3 quarters, 623-642. Bach, Hans Manfred Syndicalismus und Linkskommunismus von 1918 bis 1923, ein Beitrag zur Sozial- und Eidengeschichte der Frühen Weimarer Republik. Meisenheim am Glan, Verlag Anton Hain. Buhl, Paul. Rocker, Paul. In Buhl, Mari Jo, Buhl, Paul, Georgiakas, Dan. Encyclopedia of the American Left. Urbana, Ill, University of Illinois Press. pp. XXXXXX. Carlson, Andrew R. 1972. Anarchism in Germany, Vol. I. The Early Movement. Metuchen, N. J., Scarecrow Press. Dorfman, Joseph. August 1950. Review, Pioneers of American Freedom, Origin of Liberal and Radical Thought in America by Rudolf Rocker. The Journal of Political Economy. Chicago, University of Chicago Press. 58 362-363. Doi 10.1086/256970. ISSN 0022-3808. OCLC 1754747. Fishman, William J. January 1966. Rudolf Rocker, Anarchist Missionary, 1873 to 1958. History Today. London, History Today Limited, 16 1, 75-95. ISSN 0018-2753. OCLC 1644842. Fishman, William J. Jewish Radicals, From Tsarist Stedel to London Ghetto. New York, Pantheon Books. ISBN 978-0-394-49764-8. Fishman, William J. 2004. Rocker, Rudolf. 1873 to 1958. Oxford Dictionary of National Biography. 
Oxford University Press. Retrieved September 9, 2007. Grauer, Mina 1994. Anarcho-nationalism, anarchist attitudes towards Jewish nationalism and Zionism. Modern Judaism. 14 1, 1-19. Grauer, Mina 1997. An Anarchist Rabbi, The Life and Teachings of Rudolf Rocker. New York, St. Martin's Press. ISBN 978-0-312-17273-2. Thesis version Kramer, Reinhard 2002. Die Mainzer Jahre des Anarchisten Rudolf Rocker. Mainzer Zeitschrift in German. Mainz, Verlag Philipp von Zabern, 96-97-315-323. ISSN 0076-2792. OCLC 1413993. Leftwich, Joseph. Rudolf Rocker, Mentor of the Jewish Anarchists. Jewish Quarterly. 34, 2, 30 33. Levy, Carl. Anarchism and Cosmopolitanism. The Palgrave Handbook of Anarchism. Chom, Palgrave Macmillan. pp. 125 148. Linz, Ulrich. Organizerter Anarchismus im Deutschen Kaiserreich von 1871. Berlin, Dunker and Humblot. Morris, Brian. 2012. Rudolf Rocker 1873-1958, a tribute. Anarchist Studies. 22, 11-21. Reichert, William O. 1976. Partisans of Freedom, a study in American anarchism. Bowling Green, Ohio, Bowling Green University Popular Press. ISBN 978-0-87972-118-3. Rocker, Rudolf Anarcho-Syndicalism, Theory and Practice, an Introduction to a Subject which the Spanish War has brought into prominence. Modern Publishers. Rothfels, Hans, Rocker, Rudolf July 1951. Review, Die Entscheidung des Abendlands by Rudolf Rocker. American Historical Review. Washington, American Historical Association. 56 839-841. doi, 10.2307-1851988. ISSN 0002-8762. JSTOR 1851988. OCLC 1830326. Rubner, Hartmut 1998. Eine Unvolkommen Demokratie ist besser als eine Volkommen Despotie, Rudolf Rockers Wandlung vom Kommunistischen Anarchisten zum Libertären Revisionisten. Archive für die Geschichte des Widerstandes und der Arbeit, 15-205-226. Rubner, Hartmut 1994. Freiheit und Brat, die Freie Arbeiter Union Deutschlands, FOD, eine Studie zur Geschichte des Anarchosyndicalismus. Berlin, Libertad Verlag. Rubner, Hartmut. 2007. Rocker, Rudolf. Datenbank des Deutschsprachigen Anarchismus in German. Retrieved November 23, 2007. Valence, Margaret. July 1973. Rudolf Rocker, a biographical sketch. Journal of Contemporary History. London, Beverly Hills, Sage Publications. 83, 75-95. doi, 10.1177, ISSN 0022-0094. OCLC 49976309. Vogel, Angela Der Deutsche Anarcho-Syndicalismus, Genes und Theorie einer Vergissenen Bewegung. Berlin, Karen Kramer Verlag. Wienand, Peter Der Geboren Rebel, Rudolf Rocker, Leben und Werk in German. Berlin, Karen Kramer Verlag. ISBN 978-3-87956-106-3. External links Rudolf Rocker Papers at the International Institute of Social History Profile at the Rudolf Rocker Cultural Center Winnipeg Manitoba Rudolf Rocker Page at the Anarchist Encyclopedia Rudolf Rocker Archive at the Kate Sharpley Library Rudolf Rocker Archive at Libcom.org Rudolf Rocker Page at Anarcho-Syndicalism 101 Rudolf Rocker Texts at Anarchy as Order Riggenbach, Jeff October 1, 2010. A Tribute to Rudolf Rocker. Mises Daily. Ludwig von Mises Institute.
Works by or about Rudolf Rocker in Libraries WorldCat Catalog. The Radical Pamphlets Collection at the Library of Congress contains materials written by Rudolf Rocker. <laughs> 